Hey, welcome back to me being cheap. I just thought I was filming a segment on how to make Ezekiel bread only to discover that the camera wasn't recording. So I've already done the first step, but let me catch you up. Okay, so Ezekiel bread um, is made from several whole grains. Uh, true Ezekiel bread involves soaking the grains and the beans, sprouting them, then dehydrating them, and then grinding them into flour. So to make this, you're going to need several pieces of equipment. First of all, you're going to need jars or something to sprout your grains in. Now they make special sprouting jars with lids that allow you to dump the water and add more water. I'm not going to go out and buy those and spend money. Instead, what I did is I got some fabric um, that's very, uh, has a loose weave I can actually see through this fabric. And we've attached it using a standard canning jar ring, such as this. So that will allow us to be able to dump out the water without spilling the grain down the drain. And then we can actually add uh, fresh water through the fabric. Um, the other equipment that you'll need is a dehydrator. And if you don't have one of those, you can actually dehydrate in the oven. The next thing that you'll need is a grain mill. And I purchased this one off of Amazon. Um, it's got the little attachment. It attaches to my KitchenAid. I love my KitchenAid. I love all the attachments that come for it. Um, I don't know what you would use as an, as an alternative to this, as you really need to be able to make flour. So um, I read on the internet, I was looking around and People don't recommend using like a food processor because it simply does not turn the grains into flour. So I did uh, go out and splurge on this. Now, um, these grains that you need to make this, this is wheat, this is spelt, this is barley, this is millet, green lentils, Pinto beans, great northern beans, and kidney beans. These last four items are common items. You can pick them up at grocery stores. I bought these at Dillon's, which would be your local Kroger affiliate. These other items um, where I live are not very common, and so I actually purchased these off of Amazon. Now, the larger the quantity that you purchase as far as weight, the better value you're going to get. But since I am new to this, I did not know if my kids would like it or if I would like it, and I didn't want to end up with 25 pounds of barley because, you know, if, if they don't like the bread, then I don't know. I guess I can make beer or something with all this. But anyhow, um, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different ingredients. Um, this is actually based upon uh, the Bible. Um, this is called Ezekiel bread. You can look up the verse if you like. But this recipe, um, I saw it multiple places on the internet. It's two and a half cups of the wheat, which is this first ingredient. One and a half cups of the spelt, which is this one. A half cup of barley. quarter cup of millet, a quarter cup of green lentils, and then two tablespoons each of pinto beans, great northern beans, and kidney beans. Again, these last four are pretty common items. Now, I am using separate jars because these items are going to sprout at different rates. Now, the recipe, the way that I'm making it, involves soaking and then sprouting. And then once they sprout, you're looking for a little tail that's about no more than a quarter inch long. It'll be like a little white tail where it's just starting to sprout. Well, these items, they sprout at different rates. So if you mix it all together and soak it, you may have some of it that sprouts right away and then others that, you know, it takes forever for it to sprout. So that is why I'm soaking in the different 
containers. Now, there's, there's ways that you can do this. There are some places that actually sell the flour already made. There are some recipes that call just for using this uh, whole grain or raw without doing the soaking, um, just putting it in the grain mill and making the flour that way. Um, but that doesn't have the effects of the soaking and the sprouting. There are some recipes where they go ahead and soak, sprout, and then grind it wet, uh, but that just didn't look like the, the quality of bread I was looking for. It looked rather kind of flat and, and chunky. So what we're actually going to do is soak these and then sprout them till they each have little tiny sprouts, put it in the dehydrator. Once it's dehydrated, run it through the grain mill and make flour. Now, um, First, what I'm going to do, I've, I've already added, um, I had some filtered water that I added to the jars, and we're going to cover these and let it soak for about 12 hours. Um, so I will come back and talk to you um, after it's been 12 hours, um, but we will actually dump the water and add fresh and then go again, dump it out, and then we'll just start and watch for the, the tails to start sprouting. All right, thanks for watching for now, and I will be back in touch. This will probably be a multiple day video. It'll take multiple. Hey, welcome back. So the beans have been soaking overnight. So now we are going to dump them um, and then put in some fresh water, rinse them, and then drain them again. So again, I have put the cheesecloth, or it's not really cheesecloth, it's just a thin cloth, and some screw bands. I'm just going to turn this upside down and let it drain. Filming this over here at the table because I really don't have a good way to film this at my sink. Anyway, we're going to shake that out, add some filtered water. You can just pour that right through the cloth. Give it a rinse. And then let it drain. We'll do the same for the next. Is that kidney beans? I want to drain out. going to shake out the excess <clears throat> and then leave them in the jar. Probably uh, go ahead and rinse them and drain them um, probably about every six hours or so until we see the sprouts. And I guess if I had some of those uh, fancy lids that did this a little bit better it might go a little bit easier. But all right so I think you get the picture um, we do have eight different beans and grains that we're using so I get to repeat this about eight times um, but I think you probably understand what it is that you need to do all right, I will check back in with you later. Hey, welcome back. I guess you could say this is the third day. So a recap, we started um, one afternoon, I guess that would have been Sunday, and uh, we soaked the beans in water and then drained them. Or actually, we soaked them. It ended up being overnight uh, or about 12 hours, and then, so that was yesterday, and then throughout the day yesterday, about every six to eight hours, I would rinse and then drain them again. So now it is Tuesday morning, and these are the results. So this jar right here, uh, this is the wheat. And I think the camera is picking this up, but if you see the little white dots, the little tails, that is where it has sprouted. So this one is ready to go. 
This is the millet, and these seeds are very small. Um, and I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up or not, um, but they have actually sprouted as well. Um, of course, these seeds are small, so the sprouts are small, but if you can't see it, you'll just have to take my word for it. These are the lentils, and the lentils have sprouted as well, and I think that's showing up nicely on the camera. These are the great northern beans. These have not sprouted, so we're going to have to let these um, we're going to have to let these go a little bit longer before we put them in the dehydrator. This next jar is the spelt, the spelt berries, and you can see the little white dots. These have also sprouted. And this next jar, this is the barley, and you can see the white dots on there. These have sprouted as well. This next jar, these are the kidney beans, and these have not sprouted. So we're going to let these uh, go a little bit longer. And the same for the pinto beans. These have not sprouted either. So all of these are going to get another rinse. The ones that have sprouted, I'm going to let them drain very well, and then once they have drained, I'm going to put them in the dehydrator. Um, but I will come back with my camera before I start that step so that you're able to see. So um, I guess really the only three that haven't sprouted yet um, would be the beans, the kidney beans, the pinto beans and the great northern beans. Uh, the lentils have sprouted, but these three beans have not. All right, thanks for watching. I'm going to go give everything a final rinse and then I will catch up with you when it's time to put them in the dehydrator. All right, welcome back. I have my dehydrator trays and I have put several squares of parchment paper in there. Uh, the holes in the tray are such that uh, the grains would likely fall through if I were to put them in the tray directly. I don't know if you can see how large those are. Um, anyhow, I know that they do make special screens uh, for the purpose of doing things like this, but I don't have them. So I'm just using squares of parchment paper. When you do that, you don't want to completely block the holes. You've got to be able to let some air get in there and get around. So um, along the edges here. I've left uh, openings as well as uh, around the middle and then of course the air can flow up through here as well. So I'm going to set this camera down and uh, go ahead and give a demonstration on loading up um, some of the dehydrator trays. So I think we'll start here with the lentils. And these were rinsed and drained this morning. I have to get this spatula and get the rest out. have to work on getting the rest of that out of the jar but I'm going to attempt to spread these out um, so that they're as close to a single layer as possible and those that fell through I'll just have to pick those up once I load the trays into the dehydrator all right so I think you get the point with this and um, I will check back in with you when I'm getting ready to stack the trays in the dehydrator. 
All right, welcome back. I have these de dehydrator trays uh, loaded up. Some of them are a little bit thick. Um, I might go ahead and climb up and get some other trays off the shelf um, if it's just taking too long to dry. Uh, for example, this one, it's, it's in there pretty thick. So we'll just, we'll just see how that goes. Um, I do have extras, so that may be a possibility. Um, I am going to load this tray up on the uh, lowest one, or actually, no, that'll be the highest. My heat, my heat comes from the top down. So we'll lay out the thinnest, uh, thinnest layers on the bottom first. As you can see, there's a lot that spilled on the table. That's okay, we'll get that taken care of. Okay, my dehydrator actually has a setting for nuts and seeds. Um, at 105 so that's what we'll start it at but we'll just keep an eye on it um, I wanted to show you a close-up of some of these uh, so you can see actually what the little tail looks like when it is sprouting so there's that here's one of the lentils on the table you can see oh it's falling through my fingers you can see the little tail that's on it all right, so uh, I'm going to clean this mess up and go ahead and load up the, uh, while the trays are loaded, and go ahead and plug it up and get it going. Thanks for watching. Okay, welcome back. So it's later on the evening of basically the third day, and these beans have sprouted. I don't know if you can see those tiny little sprouts coming out. Um, but I've had them draining upside down uh, on a towel to soak out the extra liquid and we're going to go ahead and put them in here in the dehydrator and probably just let this go overnight check it in the morning all right thanks for watching all right welcome back the grains were in the dehydrator throughout the night uh, this includes the beans that i put in there last night as well so they're all sprouted they're all dehydrated well, let's take a look Basically, this is what we have, several trays worth. Um, we're going to put these trays into this glass bowl here. See if I can do this without making a mess. if we do it this way. Okay, so I think you guys get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and unload the dehydrator and then the next step will be to actually grind the grains into flour. All right, I'll check back in with you in a few. All right, welcome back. I have emptied the dehydrator into this glass bowl, so it is full of grain. Uh, this is an eight cup bowl up to the line, so this is almost eight cups of grain and beans. I have the grain mill set up on the KitchenAid. Uh, this is the first time I have used this. I did experiment a little bit, and you can see a little bit down in the, in the bowl. This right here, um, this indicates the coarseness. So this is the finest setting. This is the coarsest setting. Since we're making bread, we're gonna put it over here on the fine setting. Um, I'll go ahead and give a demonstration of what this looks like. Be a little bit noisy, so I'll tell you first what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn on the KitchenAid at about the setting of three, and then I'm going to put just a handful of grain in there. 
Um, I think it might take it a while since it is um, doing it on a very fine setting. So I don't want to overload the machine, but that's, that's what I'm going to do. bit more in. I'm gonna go ahead and grind up the rest of that. I think what I might be able to do is just um, put the grains in the hopper and just let it go and uh, refill the hopper on the KitchenAid as, as I need to, but um, I have eight cups of this to grind up, so um, I will check back in with you later. And here's the flour that was made by grinding the grains and the beans. So later I'm going to bake some bread. Hey, welcome back. Okay, so earlier today I ground the grains into flour and it made this much. It's a whole bowl full. For those of you that are curious, it was, um, I measured it out, it was seven and two thirds cups. Uh, but we're going to use this full amount in the recipe. But the first thing that we have to do is mix together our wet ingredients and the recipe says uh, to mix it and let it sit for about five minutes. So the first thing that we're going to use is four cups of warm water. And you wanna use warm, not hot, because you don't wanna kill the yeast. So I've already got this measured out. And I'm actually using the whisk attachment on my KitchenAid. When we get ready to mix the dough, I will actually switch over and use um, the dough hook. All right, so that was four cups of warm water. The recipe calls for a cup of honey, and I'm gonna make one slight change. Um, I'm not supposed to have a whole lot of honey, that's another story. Um, so I am actually going to use some uh, sorghum, and this is actually labeled as pure honey. And you know, stuff like this keeps forever. Um, you know, they found like honey and things like that in the tombs. Uh, this was labeled as honey, um, years ago when I bought it, um, but it doesn't taste like honey. It actually tastes like sorghum, which is made from, hmm, can't remember. Uh, you juice the one plant and then you cook it down. So um, it's plant-based, but yeah, it doesn't even smell like honey. But we're gonna use a, we're gonna use a cup of it. Um, some people call sorghum, sorghum molasses. Anyhow, I had this that I need to use up, and I'm not supposed to have a whole lot of honey. Um, I did uh, food sensitivity testing, uh, foods that may cause um, inflammation in the body. The name of that test was ALCAT, A-L-C-A-T, and honey is one of the things that I'm not supposed to have. So, and it's kind of funny. Um, when I was little, I really couldn't stand honey. It would give me a headache. Um, and I became accustomed to it over the years because my in-laws were all beekeepers. So I kind of just got used to it and um, found I wasn't supposed to have it. I, I think there may actually be something to that because a lot of the things that I'm not supposed to have, 
Um, I don't like and have never liked. Uh, one of the things I'm not supposed to have is hops, like beer, like the things that you put in beer. I'm not supposed to have that. have never liked beer. But we're going to try and get all this sorghum out of the jar so we can have close to a cup as possible. We're going to dump this in. Let that rest up there for a minute. Let it drain. Okay. And the next ingredient is one half cup of olive oil. to add in the yeast and it's two teaspoons full and I buy my yeast in bulk and then I just put it in an old Tupperware keep it in the fridge this stuff will keep forever as long as you keep it refrigerated if you buy the little individual envelopes that's very expensive to buy your yeast that way but if you buy it in bulk it's not bad mix this up and then I'm gonna let it sit for five minutes and then I'll come back and we'll do the next step stay tuned okay the batter has mixed for 10 minutes and again this is a batter type bread so it's not gonna look like dough it's gonna look more like if you've ever made banana nut bread that type of bread okay so get that out of the way. I have my loaf pans and I've greased them. So now we're going to uh, equally divide uh, the batter between the two loaf pans. dough hook out without making a mess. Okay. It's kind of a, I don't know, kind of sticks together like a yeast bread would. Okay, these look about equal. This is what this looks like. Now, the recipe says that we should let this rise for about an hour in a warm place. So, um, I am going to go ahead and preheat my oven. Um, and you're supposed to preheat to 350. Normally, I wouldn't preheat it that far in advance. Uh, but it's kind of cold in this kitchen uh, right now, so I'm going to go ahead and heat the oven so it'll heat the kitchen up. And I'm going to go ahead and move these um, a little bit over there um, near my oven. So, pardon the messy kitchen. All right, I'll check back with you in about an hour. Okay, so I'll let these rise for an hour and... It's almost doubled in size, maybe not quite double. But anyhow, I have the oven heated to 350 degrees. Um, I'm going to put them in the oven and bake them for 50 minutes. So I will check back in with you in a few. 
And here is the finished product. Again, that was 50 minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. It expanded even more. So we do have a taller loaf than what it was. I'll let it cool a bit and then I'll have a taste and we'll see how it is.